Now let's jump into a little Q&A. Do do do. <laughs> Fire blocks sound like a Bruce Lee movie from the 70s. Yeah, it did. Yeah. Pirate, Pirate X, Pirate, same thing. I'm so happy I moved my over 30,000 Matic and all my Bitcoin out. Still at seven and a half ETH. I left, uh, like I said, like around 3% of my portfolio on there. Was I very happy about that? No, but uh, that was my fault. And a lot of people left a lot more. This is what it is. And for me, for Celsius, like I had talked about them for a long time. I, I taught them like they're my one-two punch. I was like, well, you know, I'm using uh, a Voyager to buy crypto and I transferred over to, uh, to Celsius because it was uh, told to me on my channel, everything was uh, on the up and up and it was pretty good. Didn't, didn't work out like that again. And then of course, when I went to consensus, figured out something was wrong because everyone was telling me it's wrong. Did that video on June 12th. And then nine hours later, it shut off withdrawals. Same thing with uh, Voyager. Once I figured out they gave that 600 and something million dollar loan to three euros capital. Uh, then I knew uncollateralized. I'm like, it's, it's going to go down. So on June 22nd, I put a video up. And that's where I, that's where we got the, uh, all the rules that you see below me. But yeah. So Bobby says not one YouTuber has spoken about the sell short squeeze. Okay. Here's the thing. It's so is that going to help anybody with that has their funds on Celsius? No, it's going to, it's going to burn the people that try to short the Celsius token. So what? Great. Have fun. I don't care about that. And people like talking about it like it's the best thing of all time. It's not the best thing of all time. It's screwing up a lot of things. I mean, if you want to do that and you want to go there and short somebody and make a bunch of money, that's great. But just remember, it's not just a bunch of big institutions too. It's people who look at that and go, wow, Celsius is going down. I should probably short it. And they shorted it. And now they get out. That, that's the free market. You do whatever you want to do. I'm not your dad. I'm not, it's definitely not a financial advisor. Go right ahead. But as we do these things, all these things are moving around, it's kind of hard to track the things that are going on for Chapter 11 so we can see what we're happening with all the Celsius tokens, especially with Alex Mashinsky and what he actually did with it. So if you want to talk about short squeeze, this is not the channel. I don't really care about it. All right. I think Celsius is a hard lesson. Many of us won't be taking that much third-party risk ever again. Yeah, it's a great lesson. It is. It just annoys me to no end sometimes that uh, had to happen like this. But if you take a look at it and go, well, all right, I can, people can bounce back. They're much more resilient than they think they are. <laughs> Tell them that. Uh, Craig says, I'm heavy on HBAR, Algo, and DAG. Praying it pays off. Algo Rand looks like a pretty good one. HBAR looks like pretty advanced. I don't know about uh, uh, DAG yet, so. Thank God I never use them. Feel so bad with those of you that had. Just wait, trust me. You'll come into, you'll come into something that'll, that'll do some kind of pull on you. Unless you just, and I gotta tell you, ah, let me see. Let me show you. The only people that really aren't too affected, aren't affected at all, is if you were invested in Bitcoin, Bitcoin only, and you have everything on cold storage. If that was the case, you know what you're, you're looking at all these videos and people who are losing? This is, what, this is what you are right here. This is you. This is you rolling through life, no problems whatsoever. <laughs> Because, because you have everything on cold storage. It's everything just gets disintegrated around you. And that's just the truth. The bear market is when more Bitcoin maxis are, are minted all the time. So congratulations to Bitcoin maxis and cold storage. All right. Oh yeah, I'm gonna get this. Let's see, where to go, where to go. I was never a good skater. This is me, very nice. Schmoozing.
Where is that one? I just saw it. I listened to your Voyager and had weird feelings and took it off in time. Yeah. Remember that Voyager video? June 22nd, I'm like, look, 600 something million uncollateralized loan to three euros capital, which is collapsing. Come on. I don't think that was one. Do you like Cadena? I don't really know about Cadena. And I'm very biased on this channel. So if I don't invest into it, I don't really talk about it too much. Sorry. This is a good question. When you have crypto and a hardware wallet at home, do you need to add its value to home personal possession insurance? Will they even know what you're talking about? First of all, they won't know exact. They won't have. They have no idea what you're talking about, and uh, they won't insure it. I'm pretty sure. And if you if you lose it or get hacked in the United States, I think you can only claim like three thousand dollars or something like that per year. So it's not even a big thing. Now things may have changed. Check with your CPA. I'm not a CPA, but that's it. Uh, let's see. I have, I have an ex-wife, so I know all about a rug. And someone just, someone had a comment I can't find anymore, but it said that, hey, did you watch the, uh, the video from CoffeeZilla where they talked about Voyager and their fees and, uh, and how it was exposed as, as they were not giving you the lowest fees? I did watch that. It was very interesting, especially with, because uh, that was the whole point. You're supposed to get some, um, you know, order routing, smart order routing from different exchanges to give you the best price. And then off you went. So there is, there is that. It looked like to be legit. However, CoffeeZilla did actually also talk about how that Voyager should not have filed the, the bankruptcy in Chapter 11 uh, per SIPA. And we had a, I, I did a video uh, with a gentleman who's a bankruptcy lawyer expert in Puerto Rico. And uh, he's been doing it for 15 years. And he goes, they couldn't do SIPA because they, there is no uh, definitive guideline as to are they dealing in securities or not. Because per the SEC, they haven't, they haven't clarified anything. Neither is a CFTC. So they couldn't even go through SIPA. And Voyager even came out and said, look, we even uh, tried to uh, be a part of SIPA from 2018, 19, and 20. And they rejected us three years in a row. So... You just got to kind of take it with a grain of salt and go, well, is that the truth? I don't know. I can tell you they did. I mean, what is the truth? They did go down. They made a stupid, stupid loan. But you know what? There is a, a point I forgot to talk about, and I'll share with you guys because I forgot to say it in the live stream, which was there's a great article, great article about Three Arrows Capital and, and these two these two gents who pretty much sank the entire market and they're responsible for a trillion dollars loss. And it was, a, it was from uh, NY Mag and it's just a great background look as to what happened, how these guys, they weren't even good traders uh, doing FX. And then all of a sudden they became these, these crypto geniuses. It's amazing. It's, it's amazing how... People can raise, rise to the top and become geniuses without knowing a, a, a frat, just uh, a good amount. And, and we believe it, unfortunately, because we want to believe. That's how people work. We want to believe in the, the goodness of people, and we get a little bit blindsided. It happens to all of us. And uh, I can understand now why, why Voyager gave him the loan and why a lot of people believe into him. And it's a great read. I'm going to cover this in a separate video, just this article. It's very long and extensive but it takes a look at Voyager, Three Arrows Capital, and you can tie that also into Celsius if you wanted to. So yeah, I, can get, I get it. <laughs> David says, that's what happens when minnows swim with sharks. That's why like, I, don't, I don't put a lot of faith into a lot of people saying, well, you, know, you can get rich doing this, you're rich doing that. Look, there's no shortcuts. It's not, it's just time. It's just time in the market. That's really what it is. I wasn't some genius that I knew that, oh, I know Cardano was going to go from seven cents to three bucks. I, I, I knew it the whole time. I knew Bitcoin was going to go from 3,000 to 67,000. I knew it the whole time. I didn't know it. I just thought it would happen. I just went long. That's it. And, you know, that's all the way it comes down to. <laughs> One Taco Bell. No news or no never. Everybody's a genius during a bull market. That is true. 
That's why I'm going to do more videos during the bear market and then pull down during the bull market. Probably do like two or three a week only. And then the only thing I'm going to do during the bull market is just talk about the look into Bitcoin uh, charts and TA and just to to talk about like, okay, what's coming up? It's coming up. We're coming toward the top. Remember to take profits. Remember to take profits. I'm going to be so annoying by saying that to people and they're going to, and then everybody, this is what I know it'll happen. I'm pretty sure it'll happen. Everybody will call me stupid. Like they call me stupid when I sold Bitcoin uh, back in the last market and sold my, my crypto to help me pay for my, my house in Puerto Rico. And they're going to call me dumb. I don't know what I'm doing. I got, you know, and there's all these institutions. Sure. Whatever. I'm going to take profits. I'm also going to tell you what I'm going to do, which is uh, I'm not going to sell at the top because it's, it's very tough to do those things. And I'll never buy at the bottom. I don't care. I just want to get close enough. And that's it. So when the, when the next uh, bull market comes around, 2024, 2025, I'll probably start uh, slow down on these videos and just start uh, selling and reminding people to sell as time goes on. Which would lead me to my next question. I don't know if this is a good question to bring up here or not. But uh, you know Michael Saylor is always talking about the, the most important thing he wants to do is he just wants to accumulate Bitcoin and have as much Bitcoin because it's so important to have Bitcoin. You know, like when everything was going on, he's a very smart guy, right? Like when everything was going on around, don't you think like maybe he could be like how Elon Musk does it. He's like, look, uh, we need some cash flow and I'm going to start selling Bitcoin and my shares for different things because it's the reality. And he has money and cash on hand. And then when things go down, he can buy up a bunch of things. I just look at it and like, I know people just talk about diamond hands that hold forever. I'm like, is that really the best thing? I mean, honestly, I don't think it is. Because if you like, again, if you bought in 20, 2017 and you almost like at the very top, 19,700, I mean, we're in 2022 and we're only at $23,000. Is that like a great hold? Honestly, I'm just saying. It just, it just it's like to me, I'm like, it doesn't make sense. Like if, if you see the market is super overheating, like, you know, like, I mean, I wasn't smart enough to, to sell everything. I sold a chunk, but just to go, wow, it's pretty high. Maybe I should take a little bit of profits here. And then, but of course there are corporations and they have to, they have to disclose that with the SEC. I understand that. But I mean, still, you still, get, I mean, why wouldn't you do it? Uh, let's see. This ought to be good. Let's see. Do not uh, take anybody's comments out from right now. Moving on. Any, all the admins. So this one, I buy, buy, and never sell. Crypto is different for me. It's not about getting more rich, really. I believe in what I hold. Okay. Well, that's great. It's 800 ETH at 90 cents and selling at $4,200 each. So yeah, if you can be, if you are holding for that long, sure. Makes sense of that. But that's just it. If your primary job is, is to accumulate as much as possible, because you're different VR nuggets. You're just an individual person. But MicroStrategy answers to who? Stockholders. And if their whole thing is that they have to hold Bitcoin, and that's pretty much like a proxy, isn't the job to, to maximize profits? Just saying. Do the math. I'm doing the math. You're not that guy, Digital. I think I'm the guy. I think I'm one of a guy who can do some basic math. Let's see. If you want to sell the top, sell six months before. I sell because I'm the worst. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> VR nuggets. I'm younger and better looking too. I need people to watch my other house. House. I don't know what you're talking about. How's the DHA working? Good. Good enough to get me pissed off at some guy's comments. <laughs> So maybe I shouldn't be. Ah, I love, see like these guys, I love these guys. I love like, like people like VR Nuggets who comes in and says like, I bought it this low. I bought it this low, I bought it this low. Every place I go to, there's always someone who bought it at super low and got it way before you did. Sure. 
And maybe you did. I'm not sure. But uh, it's just amazing how many people I meet that just got in so early. Sailor has an old tweet that said, Bitcoin's going to zero. He hated it below 1K, but loves it above 20K. Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> Here's a great quote. Here's a great quote, statement. But if you missed the top, wouldn't it be worse? Let me ask you guys a question. Uh, first of all, it's very hard to, to time the tops, right? Some people will say, well, this guy called the top, this guy called the top. Yeah, maybe they called the top three months in a row. I don't know. So to miss the top isn't so much of a, of a big thing. To miss taking profits, I think, is. And I think there's a, there's a dichotomy between where people are as far as what they want to do. So, like, if you're a person who just says, I'm going to hold forever and I'm never going to sell anything, and I'm just going to, like, my question is, what do you do against that? You can do, like, what, what a lot of rich people do. If you want to take loans against it, uh, I took a loan against it. But you got to make sure that, uh, that you have enough collateral moving forward or else you get liquidated. And, of course, if you can take loans against it, that's not a taxable event. So you can come out the other side. So there's a, there's a phrase that they use, uh, buy, borrow, die, which is buy an asset, borrow against it, and die then put it into your, uh, your estate and then pass on to your kids and uh, there's no taxable events. That's just a little secret for the rich. But um, if you're just a regular person, right? I think we're all regular, pretty regular people. No one's driving 10 Lambos or seven Lambos, one for each day of the week. Maybe you're living paycheck to paycheck. Maybe you're struggling to make ends meet and uh, pay the mortgage. I'm talking to you. I'm not talking to uh, the billionaire. If you're a billionaire on my show, thanks for stopping by. I don't think I'm your guy, though. But the thing is, if you're getting closer to the top and you're thinking to yourself, well, maybe I should, I should take a little profits because who knows what's going to happen later? Because I can tell you right now, for every billionaire and multi, multi, multi millionaire that's out there, I got 100x more people who are like, man, I wish I would have sold a little bit just to take a little bit so I could pay for my mortgage so I could help pay off my student loan, so I could help pay off my, my credit cards, so I wouldn't be in this position. And God help me, I wish I would have taken money off of Celsius and Voyager and everything else. That's a separate one. So I think like if we're talking about missing the top, it's okay to miss the top. But what's not okay for me, I don't know about you, is, is to not take profits uh, along the way. Nobody ever went bro taking profits. So why don't you just take a little bit along the way? I'm not talking about, it's up to you. 5%, 10%, 2%, I don't know. But as time goes on and you see your everything, people ride things up so much, they ride it all the way to the very top and then go, it'll keep going, it doesn't. And it drops to 25%. It'll go back up, drops another 20%. Okay, now I got to hold because I'm kind of breaking even. And then drops another four, you know, 10, 20%. Well, shoot, now I really got to hold and buy more. It's just one of those things where it just annoy. It just sometimes it's better just to be a little bit safer and go from there. <laughs> Flip bags up bottom. I do. I just don't show it as much as I. Master says, "Rob, what are you decing other than Bitcoin?" I'm hesitant to say those things now because. Like I'm hesitant to even say like what crypto, what exchanges I use because like here, I'm gonna give you an example for the majority of people. I use Coinbase, okay? I like using Coinbase. It's uh, reliable, it doesn't shut down as much as it used to be. There's, they have Coinbase one where you spend $30 and you have no fees for the entire month up to $10,000 in trading limits. I like using Coinbase right now. Makes sense for me, I can dollar cost average. By me saying that, Later on, if Coinbase falls, goes away, some kind of run in the bank or something like that, then I get about 1,000 people going, you told me about Coinbase, and now I lost everything. So like from now on, I'm just going to say that I am dollar cost averaging Bitcoin and just going from there. It just, it's just, uh, just safer that way. So that's what's up. Uh, let's see. If Celsius runs out of money by October, how do they pay us back? 
pay for their lawyers, et cetera. Something like October is the end game. We see nothing. I don't know what's the end game. I know that there is, there is loans to be paid back, not just three euros capital, but other loans out there, the Bitcoin mining operation, and maybe some other types of uh, liquidities we don't know. That's what chapter 11 is for, to bring forth all the different, uh, uh, the things that are in the darkness into the light and see exactly where all it is. Right, right now, it doesn't look too good as far as operating expenses. looks like they're going to be insolvent very soon. Yeah, so St. Jude says, if you're looking at it as a source of income, then yes, trade it, but just look at it as a family wealth. Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it just depends, you know? Like right now, like like right now, we're at 2,000. So yeah, I guess you would have, like for, for Ethereum, it would have actually gone up like 75%. So not too bad in five years. It's not the same as about an S&P. YouTube, I mean, uh, with Bitcoin, not too much. Cardano, actually, it'd be down, unfortunately. I think, I think Cardano topped out at, uh, I want to say, a buck 20, somewhere around there. And now I think it's around 50 cents. So, yeah. I guess it just depends on your, it just depends on your timeline. Mm. 8 bit artist says with Celsius being broke I have no hope of getting any of my money back I'm sure Alex will sell more sell tokens though apparently he sold I don't know it seems like every time that I talk about it there's always someone that says that's not true there's this other piece of information and, and things going out there I don't know I'm gonna wait. I'll wait that's, that's what's great. I have time. I can wait for all the truth to come out, and then I'll report on it. Is SafeMoon the next joke of a crypto? I don't know about it. I've heard about it, but I wouldn't invest into it. Yeah, I got in at 18.2. Sally got locked in Voyager. Yeah. See, everybody's different. So, like, some people look at this as generational wealth, and they're just going to hold on to it forever. Uh, Zenos has got a different way. I watched my portfolio go way, way up and then way down. Took zero profits along the way, so not again. It's whatever you want to do. I mean, if you want to hold on to it, if you're like at a horizon like 20 years, probably work out pretty well. Mental X says, uh, if, I, if I was 20 years old and spent 100K in crypto, I'd hold for 30 years without issues unless I hit 20 million. Sounds good. I can see that. Yeah, Amy says, I'll just sit on mine because even if I bought too high right now, in the future, I know I'll be fine. It's one of those things like, it is nice to have people in the bear market who kind of, who get it. <laughs> I could have sold my portfolio top and bought a Lambo. <laughs> that's, the, that's the worst, that's the worst uh, position you could be in is to buy a Lambo and then just have it depreciate. Oh, maybe they do. I don't know. I never had one. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't get you talking about profits, taking profits so much last year, but I'm all ears this round run. Depends on what you want to do. Like for some people, they just want to buy, 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 and just hold on to it forever. Again, unless you're taking loans against it, the buy, borrow, die method, it's, uh, I mean, what are you going to do with it? And then people will say, well, in the future, we'll just use Bitcoin to buy services and products. That could be true. But then, like, at that point, like, would you want to do that? Like, would you want to be the pizza guy? Because, I mean, think of it this way. Are you rational enough to go through life, let's say, in 20 years, and then say, well, yeah, now I want to start to, I've saved this thing for 20 years and now I'm going to use it for, for services and goods. I don't know if you'd do that. I think you'd be like, now it's going up again. Uh, you built that pool house of profits? No, 
me and the wife have had this house for, gosh, almost 20 years now. So this is a lot longer before. I can't express the anger I live with daily knowing Alex Mashinsky is alive and walking the streets peacefully during the typical life of the super rich and go with me. I, I can't speak for him, but uh, I don't think, and this is not going to be a popular opinion, but I don't, I can't humanly think that anybody could walk about and uh, be happy with life knowing what happened. I mean, wouldn't you just, wouldn't you just feel like the ultimate, ultimate, ultimate failure? Because it's not about sometimes, it's, not so much about you losing for yourself and your family. It's you losing out for millions of people. I mean, and then people will say, well, what about Bernie Madoff? Well, Bernie Madoff was mentally, I don't think he was all there either. But again, there's different people out there that just, I always, I have a fatal flaw. And the fatal flaw is I think people are like me. They're not, not everybody's, and I'm not normal, but <laughs> Not everybody's, you know, in the same way. Some people like to take advantage. Some people like to screw you over. Some people like to, you know, manipulate just how it is. That's how people are. Okay. Asif says, this brood is always wrong. Stick with James or Ben. So Asif, tell me where I'm wrong. And I'd love to talk with you about that. Buy and bear, sell and bull and difficult. Exactly right. Everybody's, you know, guess what? Newsflash, no one's perfect. Wish I could take in profits all the way down. Ah, Jarky back. But Jarky, thank you so much. For passing out, Jarky is like the Robin Hood of, of uh, crypto YouTube. Membership for you all. <laughs> Jarky is the Bitcoin billionaire. Yeah. So Terrence says, hey, Rob, I don't understand. You just showed us a recession or downturn coming, so why not wait to buy later and not dollar cost average? Here's exactly why. I'm going to tell you why. Because as smart as, I just showed you three smart people. One of those was the head of finance at Wharton. And he's saying that the economy is going to go up. It's going to do well, which means that crypto will do well. The second one was the former Fed chair of New York. And he said, you don't understand, it's going to keep tightening. And the third one was a gentleman who had a master's from Harvard and takes a look at, at the economy from just the output of not, not TA, but what people are doing. And there's just three different views there. How do I know that any one specific person is exactly correct? How many times have you heard somebody say, this is the last opportunity, you're gonna have to buy Bitcoin below 30, or uh, you know, uh, the crypto is gonna go to zero, or Bitcoin's gonna go to 3K, whatever else, that's just it. You never know, I never know. So even as smart as those guys are, I just bring it to you to your attention so you can make your, your best decision. Again, not a financial advisor, but when I look at these things, I'm like, okay, there's enough risk in there where I don't want to sell my house and put everything into Bitcoin. Maybe I just want a dollar cost average, maybe not $1,000 in a certain amount of time. Maybe I only want a dollar cost average, $100, and just see what happens with the market. Because I think one of the biggest things that, that uh, eludes me is, what if they're all wrong? What if the ones, all the naysayers and everything else is like, they just didn't see these, these two or three data points. And then everything starts to shoot up, up to the moon. And I'm like, well, at least I'm glad I dollar cost average just a little bit and go from there. So that's why I still dollar cost average. And again, if, um, if the markets go down for the rest of the year, and we see some chop in 2023, which I think really what's going to happen, then 2024, I'll probably be pretty happy that I was able to buy along the way, just like exactly what I did in 2018, <clears throat> 19, and 20. Are right, your kids? Yes, got grandkids. Hey, Rob, I don't understand. You just should. Okay, same thing. <laughs> I have terrible luck in crypto, but I've won two memberships of this channel. Uh, 
let's see. We're doing some Maryland. Nick, you're right on time. Yeah, Cardano was three bucks at one point. Bach Juan says we're all going to make it. Safe mood is kind of suspect. That's true. <laughs> Mr. Wolf says the Lambo that you just bought loses half its value when it dried out of the gate. That's very true. Ah, what's your plans for the weekend? I've, I got a league to play in uh, at my place for sand volleyball, so that's always fun. Probably uh, then after that, there'll be a cookout somewhere. Something else is going on. And that's it. Maybe a birthday party, if I remember. Somebody's happening. There's always something happening. Thank you. Green screen is looking good. I've got this... I've got it now on a video setting, so it just keeps going. I do not. Is it better? Is it not better to sell crypto in this fake bull run so we can have a better position to buy the dip? Profit is profit. It depends on what kind of thing you're doing. Like, like I'm not that guy that like sells, you know, at the and 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 I can say, well, this is a bull trap. And then, then start selling things and moving up. Because again, all these different opinions and you can look, there's, there's one thing that two TA experts can agree on. And that is that the third one has no idea what they're doing. So like when I take a look at these things, I'm like, I don't know who is correct and who is right. But I mean, there's some pretty good indicators for, for cycle tops. And uh, if I'm wrong on those ones, well, uh, at least I'll be in some pretty big problems. But that's again, in two more years, I got time. Uh, let's see, or just live off 5% interest taking ADA. Yeah. Wow. I lost out on uh, 17,000 because I was too scared to take my profits and too hopeful that the price would go up again. And again, this is again what people are saying. Like, I guess if you're, looking for generational wealth. But sometimes I look at it and I'm like, you know, if you could just take profits and bank those profits, and then as it starts to go down, then couldn't you double up? So I guess it just depends. So have you taken precautions for the merge regarding proof of stake, proof of work split, and whether Ethereum Classic could be caught in the crossfire? So for me, it's all on the on the ledger. So even though I use Coinbase now, uh, every week or so, I just start to, I just take my crypto off. I don't do it every day because I'm lazy, I'll be honest with you. But uh, I do take it off once a week just to make sure. So around this time, I'll make sure, I think we've got, if you look on the website, when merge, W-E-N-M-E-R-G-E.com, I think it's like we got 28 days to go. So yeah, and then also I just saw a snippet that Coinbase is going to uh, suspend trades during the time of the merge. So just be aware that you probably want to take, if you're looking to take or any kind of trades or whatever else, uh, your crypto off, uh, make sure you do it before the merge happens. D Tran says, why don't you monetize your metal land with ad shares? I should do that. It's a good question. I don't even know how to do it. Yeah. Well, Gates maybe just lied to everyone. Yeah, I did, but some people they get caught up in, in some things and I'm not gonna make an excuse for that. So I'm just gonna keep going. <laughs> That was great. Thanks. It's more upsetting to know that there are still people to falling out. Oh, yeah. Sometimes you can't say a bad word about that guy, even though he pretty much screwed a lot of people over and lied right to their face. It's true. Uh... 
Yeah. T Lock I says, if I took profit 100K, I would never see a million dollar profit portfolio. Yeah, maybe not. Depends on when you do that. But remember, though, like just because you take profit in one particular area doesn't mean like the price won't go down again. Just saying. Uh, how worried should we be on the news with Turner Cash and banning ETH addresses on exchanges? You just got to hope that nobody anonymous sends you any uh, any uh, Ethereum on their from their Turner Cash account. I know so I know a couple people got got banned already. One guy got banned from using Ave. <laughs> Gary says. If I had a house, I would have sold to buy Bitcoin, which may explain why I don't own a house. Yeah. Just DCA less. Don't stop. Yeah, why not? Any new gaming plays? No. Waiting for uh, Big Time and Cornucopias to come out. That'd be interesting. Every interview with other experts. Yeah, I've had like, uh, well, I've had James on and CTO Larson. I've had uh, Hashoshi on and I've had Guy from Coin Bureau. I've had uh, Mike, Mike the Investor. I had Anthony Scaramucci on. I had, uh, yeah, I had Mickey Watkins just on a couple days ago. It was a fantastic interview. Uh, me, him, and uh, World Mobile Token. So, yeah. It's just um, getting these people to come on the show. It's uh, not something I strive to do a lot. I just kind of, if they want to come on, they come on. <laughs> Everything is sus. Uh, Rob, you ever looked at mining stock? Yeah, I own uh, Samara, matter of fact. That's about it. Thank you, Hector. Went back to Puerto Rico next month. How's your fatigue? Taking DHEA, feel a little better. Waiting for something, another supplement. I'll let you know when I get it. Feeling better. Better enough to argue with people, I guess. Yeah, Michael says, my Sweatcoin app has been lagging super bad for a couple of days. Anybody else have this issue? Ideas for a solution. I can't see how bad I'm beating. Ha, huh, it's true. Probably a lot of people, everybody's beating me these days. I can't been able to walk as much. Sweatcoin, the app itself, there was an update. And ever since that update, everything's been slow as hell. I don't know what's going on. I'm sure they're trying to fix whatever they messed up. Okay, to retirement. <laughs> oh, yeah. Robert says there's a lot of toxic toxicity in the space. You know, it's amazing. A lot of toxicity in the, during the bear market, but not as bad. Bull market, everybody's pretty happy. But of course, on this channel, like again, I get called an idiot because you know I don't know this project or that project, and it's going to the moon or whatever else. Don't see those people around here now. <laughs> That's why I love this time. <laughs> Yeah, Binance US. I um, tried to open an account with them. It didn't work out because I'm in Texas right now. So I have to wait till I get to, back to Puerto Rico and get my license. Oh, yeah. Yeah, but Jarky's doing good. He's giving out, he's giving out uh, memberships like, uh, like candy. When wrench. Next time, JH. You know, I had I bought a bunch of Cosmos. Uh, I sold it though uh, beforehand. I don't know how much it is now. I think it's down like sixty percent or something. But I I, I sold it uh, not not at the very top. I never you'll do that. But I'd like to get back into it. Just not one that I'm dollar cost averaging. I'm dollar cost averaging six cryptos right now. Or no, five, excuse me.
Well, so there's a question. Jing Chow, good one. So if ETH spiked to 4,000 to 5,000, wouldn't it be better to sell all of it close to the top? Many people kick themselves for not taking profit. If our opportunity presents itself, why not take it and wait? So here's the thing. Let's say in the next 30 days, let's just say the next 27 days before the merge, Ethereum goes from 1,800 to 2,500 to 3,500 to 4,000 to 4,500 bucks. Let's say it even it's 5,000. Before the merge, would you sell Ethereum? Because I mean, it just, it just went up. I mean, what, 400%? <clears throat> I did a 4X. No, I'm sorry, it can't be a 4X. It's almost 2,000. It doubled at least. So if it went to 4,500, would you be like, time to sell? Would you be like, well, if it went up this much, we can keep going up more. That's the question. And I will say this, it's really easy to say it if you were gonna sell it. It's really easy to say, yeah, of course I'd sell. Just wait till it gets there. Super sticker. Thanks, Jarky, for everything you do. Uh... <laughs> thank you, thank you. Link. Ooh, link staking, chain link. That's a good plan. Golden Sun. I just bought some Cardano today for some time. Probably, I mean, even if it goes, get, gets back to its all time high, you're going to be in the big money. Oh, yeah. Celsius got you. Voyager got me. Not bad. It's what I pulled most of what I had on Voyager. Off. Took the heads up from this channel. Welcome. Oh, my God. That's right. I don't know if you guys remember a guy named Nuggets News, Alex Saunders. Whew. Oh, that guy. Another Alex who gambled other people's money makes me sick. I don't even know. I don't think he even has a, I'm pretty sure he doesn't have a channel anymore. Takes a lifetime to build up a reputation, only seconds to destroy it, unfortunately. <laughs> Facts. Yeah, I liked it too. Hello, Sasha. Yeah. Diego says James doesn't think Bitcoin go back to 17K, only up from here. Hope he's right. Now the markets, now the markets are reversing. Well, well, well. Why, yes, it is. That's interesting. Hmm. So, I mean, we're still here, but look at the S&P. Now the S&P is down. Let's see what NASDAQ is. Down again. Okay, so it is correlated. Eh, doesn't matter. Jarky might be Santa Claus. How can I be part of the Sweatcoin group? Just um, tell me your username and I'll follow you. Ah, Kim says, I'm grateful this channel. I was alerted from a comment that Voyager was in trouble. I got my out five days before the crash. Thanks for sharing your info. I'm saying we're losing, geez, 150K. Yeah, you wouldn't know if it's a top. <laughs> Charky, I am Crypto Claus. Yes, exactly. What do you think about the AMZ token? Are you the spammer that spams my comments constantly about AMZ? I keep hearing this, this, this AMZ token. And it's like 40 different comments. Of course, I have this plugin. Well, actually, it's a company that monitors it and just wipes out all the comments. And I just, I just see the reports and I see AMZ token constantly. I'm like, well, thank God they get rid of that. Hmm. 
Be honest, are you buying soul? Maybe. I have comments, oh, I don't use it, I don't trust it. Uh, do you meditate? I really should start though. I don't. Did I miss it? Ah. Val says, no, I don't spam. Okay. I don't know what AMD token is, but I keep seeing this. If you don't spam, that's fine. Someone's been spamming for your coin. It's annoying. That's not a good sign. Wow. Paul said, I made 250 sweat coins. Excellent. Yeah, so during challenge, you just got to have a discipline, although you're paying on Ben that any DCA, Ben that uh, any dollar cost averaging most all besides if ETH, ETH, Bitcoin is like throwing money into a furnace. Most never return to all time high. So I want to just focus on DCA, uh, then six coins later. So here's the thing. Like, again, like, I like Ben. I like his channel. He's on, you know, uh, he's on the uh, the DCA show with us. Remember, no one's perfect. Again, like, like I told I told people about how great Voyager was in Celsius. Okay, I admit it, right? I thought that VGX was going to the moon. Ben had a theory about extended cycles going into 2022, and that didn't play out either. So again, we're not perfect. So, and I know. Ben's a very smart guy. Jane's a very smart guy. And they're exact opposites of where things are going. So when I look at that, I'm just like, okay, well, here's what I'm going to do. Instead of me dumping a bunch of money, I'll just what's called micro DCing. I just DCA less. And if, I'm, if Ben's right and things go down, not a big deal. you know. So I spent 10 bucks a week on whatever, chain link. Is that going to crush me? No. So that's what I'm doing. Again, remember, what I do is not important. It is irrelevant. It is what you want to do and who you think is right. Don't listen to me. I'm just some guy in his mom's basement with a very nice green screen. Don't listen to me. Just, I'm just telling you the news and going from there. Ah. Pedro says, if you filed your claim with Celsius, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for them to come out with the, uh, with the crypto portion, not just the, the cash portion. What do you think about Sandbox? I own some uh, property in Sandbox, two plots. I think they're going to do quite well. Just don't know when that's going to be. See? Juicy waffles. Waffles. Next big crash is a month away. Be ready. Who knows? Hmm. And I think that's it. Ah, when sending crypto to cold storage, do you send to different addresses or the same one? If you're using the ledger, just know that it can generate, it'll generate different Bitcoin addresses so you can send it to the different one. If you want to send it to the same one, it'll still work. It just helps you with anonymity, as they say. But uh, for me, I just generate a new one every time. Just it's easier for me. And that's it. So look, we've gone an hour and 11 minutes. It's a long time. So look, thanks everybody for stopping by. I do appreciate it. If you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, that's it for today. So thank you. I do appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next one. Adios.